six. I might get a new guitar pick. We had a blowout while ago. Okay. <coughs> it blew out halfway through the song. Here. No, guitar pick. <laughs> Becky, there's your the candidate right there. For her. <laughs> you open a can of worms there, buddy. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. I'll pray for you. Yeah, and it's on the board too. Um, obviously, there's, there's, it, I'm, I'm, I'm not say, stating anything great, but obviously, there's nothing better in, the, in a better place than the Bible to document the prophecy of, of what was to be, which was the coming of Christ in Isaiah chapter 9. Starting the whole chapter, but in 9, we, we pay special attention to that. I have it on the board up here. Um, and it's also a place that we find four names of Christ. Uh, and they're actually names which are also uh, descriptions or they're adjectives, if you would, of, of not who just who he is, uh, excuse me, of who he is, not who he was to become. And, and the reason I say that is when we think about the story of the birth of Christ, a lot of times we think about him as we do ourselves, right? We're born, and in that we become what? Whoever we're going to become, right? Well, it's just more of a reference tonight to just consider the fact that the, when, when Christ was born into the world, he was who he was, right? He was already there. So in Isaiah 9, uh, Isaiah 9 chapter 6 tonight, if, verse 6 tonight, if I could, for to us a child shall be born, and I'm using the uh, A&P version, maybe a little different up here. Um, for us, to, to us a child is born, to us a, a son shall be given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. I want you to hang on to those two words. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Four names we see right there. Now, there's, there's many more names. I started to get into them. There's, there's, a, there's a host of other names that we can talk about Christ about. But in this particular deal, that's as far as I could get. And actually, I'm only going to get past uh, two Wonderful Counselor. But there are four names right there, as well as names that you could say were descriptions or descriptors of who Christ is. Not was, not going to be. But who he is and who he is to our lives, even though this is prophecy many, many years before he was ever born. Uh, verse 7, there shall be no end to the increase of his government and of peace. He shall rule, and that's added in, he shall rule on the throne of David over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness from that time forward and that beautiful word forevermore. Thus, the point I'm trying to make um, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. And the last part, and the zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish, accomplish, accomplish this. Uh, this prophetic statement represents the present future, if I could use that term. It's a present future from the moment of his birth until ever. Mm -hmm. I can't wrap my mind around ever, mm -hmm. right? I don't have anything that's lasted forever. Have you got anything that's lasted forever in your life? Mm -hmm. No. No, we don't know the true definition of ever. But from this moment of birth until ever, Jesus Christ is in charge of... For, for his authority is not, it is, it is right now, right? It was then, it is now, and it will forever be. Mm -hmm. It's that type, it was that level of authority. You can see that in verse 7 where he says, no end to the increase, and in the final statement from which he says, from that time forwards and forever, forever. Mm -hmm. Now, there are several places in the Bible that his level of authority was made known, including Hebrews 11 and verse 1. And it said, God who at various times, in various ways, spoke in the time of past to the fathers of the prophets. And we're talking about Old Testament Bible here, right? Mm -hmm. God spoke to Moses. God spoke to Abraham. God spoke to the prophets. God spoke through prophets, Jonah, different men. But it says in verse 2 of Hebrews 11, uh, uh, chapter 11. Hang on just a minute. I'm oh, sorry. I may have not recovered from Sunday yet. I think that's Hebrews chapter 1. Let me check. I think I got you in the wrong chapter. Apologize. I think I got a typo. Here. Yes, it's chapter 1. I apologize if you're trying to follow me. It's chapter 1. Chapter 1, verse 1. My apologies. So it said, God who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets. Verse 2, has in the last days spoken to us by his son, whom, had, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. Verse 3, who being the brightness of his glory 
and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the power by the word of his power when he had made when he had by himself purged our sins set down at the right hand of the majesty on high having become so much more better than the angels as he as he has by inheritance or obtained a more excellent name than they my point to the passage of Scripture, this is just one of many, but the point to it is, is that Christ is an authority of all. Mm -hmm. Everything on this earth, mm -hmm. everything that we have, everything comes through Christ. It's, it's over every creation. Mm -hmm. every, I mean, all of it belongs to Christ. And why am I stressing that? Because the sooner that we realize what we have mm -hmm. is given to us by Him, actually it makes it a whole lot easier, in my opinion, on how we live our lives in Him. It takes away the struggle. So when you look at back at Isaiah 9 in verse 7, and, and, and the words are up here, and you look at these words, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, and prince of peace. Uh, and, and like I said, though through my study, I plan to really look at all four of those. I got stuck right here on wonderful counselor, who is Christ. And I wanted you to think about these two words. Wonderful counselor. Wonderful. Now, this does not relate to me. But wonderful, it, it might be a little hard to understand. Because I wish I could be more wonderful, right? I really do. And I wish that we could be more wonderful in appreciating our lives. Because when I look at the word wonderful, it means inspiring delight. That's why I said I don't necessarily think of myself that way. It means, well, I'm just saying, Butch. you got to be honest, right? It, 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 the, the definition of wonderful is inspiring delight, pleasurable, extremely good, or marvelous. Those are not words that I normally associate to Tim, <laughs> even on my best day. But inspiring delight, is, it's not a set of words that I find, I, I just don't find it preceding my name very much. I really don't. And the reason I say that is because as Christians, and this is where I want to lead you to, is it should be, mm -hmm. right? That we are inspiring delight I, I, uh, with all sincerity. So if we understand wonderful, then how about the word counselor? Now I want you to think about this word. Counselor is a person trained to give guidance dealing with problems. Think about that. A person trained to give guidance dealing with problems. Their exact job, right? Wonderful problem solver. Inspiring, delightful problem solver. You with me? Now, I know a lot of people, including myself and a lot of you in this room, who have dealt with life experiences. And in those life experiences, don't we more have a tendency to want to pull away from problems the more that we solve problems sometimes? I mean, after a long day of work or a long, just a long life, is there, you know, somebody comes to you like Joe came to me Sunday and said, hey, the, the toilet's leaking in the, and I was like, I don't really want to know about the toilet leaking, right? I don't, you know what I'm saying? See, we have a tendency by nature, right? I think the more that, we, even though we have the experience, as we get older, we have a tendency to really want to say, yeah, I don't really want to deal with your problem, right? right. We don't. <laughs> Which is like, could you hurry this along? i got something to do. I don't really want to deal with your problem. No, but see, the, the, the concept that I kept thinking about through all this is because uh, we're, we, don't, we don't become often, we're not often delightful when there's a problem, Right? I mean, a lot of things would just go better if we just came home every day and everything was just roses and cupcakes, right? Look at Deborah. She's like, yeah, I got kids. I know about this. you got kids. You've got life. You've got life happening. And it's nature. I'm just saying, my natural bark could blow us. I just I shut down, right? I don't want to hear any more problems. I've had problems all day long. I want to come home and just right? Because, see, sometimes, many times, the more we deal with problems, the more we seem to get less energetic about the opportunity, don't we? That's a, I mean, and I put the words in here, and I know this is this could be touchy, but we can even be a bit grouchy. Amen. I think I was just attacked. But it's in our name. I'm just saying, and, and, and y'all are laughing. That means, yeah, you relate, right? And that's the point to it. Because, see, we often become more inclined towards an attitude, enough is enough, right? And I do feel the more the older we get, the more we really want to shut the door and like, I don't want to deal with this anymore, right? I don't want to deal with the problems. 
But we see, when Christ's pursuit of the same opportunity was the more the merrier. And that's what I want to share with you tonight is that because we often forget the proper focus as the secret of Christ knew to, to, to everything that was going on, to all that goes on, the key to his ministry and should be to ours is helping people deal with problems and resolve them was his very goal. Every story you look at in the Bible, Christ did what? He said a witness for us to understand how to help someone else. Now, this, is, this gets to be a debate sometimes because sometimes we put a lot of pressure and the world puts a lot of pressure on church and on people and Christians and so forth for the physicality, right? The physical aspects of giving, right? And there, and there are needs. But our number one priority in being a church body is sharing Christ, right? And sometimes I'm just saying we lose focus on that in some cases because we do go so hard to try to, to, to try to really help people. And Barbara and I were talking on the way over. There was many times in the Bible that Christ physically helped people with things, right? And that is scripture, and that is right. But again, sometimes we put so much pressure on that that we forget to do this one thing. Hey, do you know Jesus Christ? Because as a wonderful counselor, you're a guidance counselor for Christ. And as a guidance counselor for Christ, the number one problem we're really trying to solve in people's lives is the, the, is the, law, is the lack of Jesus Christ in their life. Because he told us that when we come to him and we know him and we live in him, we begin to resolve a lot of the problems that we have in this world today, don't we? Mm -hmm. So see, that's what I want you to think about in this passage of scripture. I don't know if you've ever really looked at it from that standpoint. We read it every Christmas. We talk about it as the prophecy of Christ. But when you look at that first set of words, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor. And the beautiful part about that is when we become Christians, we should become, say it with me, wonderful counselors. Which if I go back to that definition a while ago, is people who are trained to give guidance dealing with problems. This does not seem like something I really want to do. Does it seem that way to you? But yet the very essence of our core and the witness of what Christ gave us was to be those people. Now, let, think about it. When you think about someone uh, that's going to ask you for help or you see their name come up on your phone, maybe a family member, hmm? or you think about people you don't want to spend time with, I'm not saying you don't like them. It's just, you know, but you just... Why live alone? <laughs> Now these are the people, those are the people who, 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 who you, know, you might think, you know, bring you grief or drive you crazy. But let me ask you, where did Christ spend most of his time and with whom? With sinners. Beggars, mm -hmm. liars, mm -hmm. cheats, mm -hmm. tax forgive people. me, tax people, prostitutes, lepers, the blind, the lame, the sick, the dead, the sleeping. Overall, those who had what? Problems. 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 I mean, think about Christ feeding 20,000 men beside the Sea of Galilee on a warm summer day. Just think about the true aspects of what that was. Because if there was 20,000 men there, there was women and children, and many people equate that there was 40 or 50,000 people there, if you think, two, two, two children, a wife, right, friend. And think about that, being on the side, I, don't, I mean, I know the, the, the sea is, uh, we go to the beaches, we think it's lovely, but I'm just telling you, they're not, there's decaying seaweed, the smell of fish when I go there, I'm not, a, I mean, the salt, right? And then we've got 20,000 to 50,000 people in the first century who are not deodorant friendly. I don't know, I'm being graphic, but I'm trying to get you to think about what, right? So consider hygiene was not the number one priority in the first century, and, and then a crowd of, of 20, 30,000, 30, think about that. 20 or 20, just think about 20,000 people standing shoulder to shoulder. I'm, <laughs> they probably all smelled the same. But on top of that, then he took sardine and made a sardine and barley sandwich and fed them all sardines. At least that's my graphics on it, right? It said fish, but I'm thinking there were little sardines. And you know what sardines smell like, right? Now, there was no mint dental floss. There was no porta potties. Y'all thought about that? 50,000 people on the side of Galilee, and there is no porta potties. Whoever said the potties are coming? There wasn't even one. What did they really do back then? Anyway, going on. But see. I mean, when you think about it, and it used, to, and in several examples in the Bible, it said that they would crowd Jesus, right? Yep. Right? 
that they would press lives. to him. They would cr think about that. What's going on at this time? And just think about how difficult the, uh, dealing with people. It, it requires a tremendous amount of patience, right? right. Uh, uh, dealing, with, especially messed up people. And and that's the beautiful part about us. Every one of us in this room have been messed up or are messed up, yeah. and will and and only through the grace of God are we halfway sane, right? right. right. But in, in in this actual ministry of Christ. Uh, we should it, it should be a direct reflection of how we treat people as well, right? That we're going to deal with the situation, the ones that have problems. And we have problems. John 3, 17, y'all know this one, said Christ did not come to the world to condemn it, right? But to save it. Therefore, our shortcoming is when we believe salvation to be the only act of Christianity, right? Oh, I got saved. I'm covered, right? No, it's a long ways from that. Some it's because we fall short sometimes in our efforts because in acceptance we adopt mentally that I have achieved my goal because I've accepted Christ. I'm a member of the church. I'm a member of I, I'm a member of the body of Christ. I'm an inherited child of Christ. The Christian battle we fight sometimes is is not the message of, of, of God is good or salvation is well. It is really the reality that as children of God, there is but one thing that matters, and that's leading others to Christ. And if you want to consider it tonight, being a wonderful counselor. Because hmm? that's what he gave us. That's what he gave everyone in this room. And I know many times I hear this, I'm looking for my talent, I'm looking for my gift. Folks, if you got saved, your gift was to share the word of God in your words as he gives them to you. Right. Do not overthink it. Do not try to dress it up. Speak your words. Because if you're in God, God's going to give you the words. Right? Amen. And our priority there is say, well, I need this and I need this. Yeah. And while I'm helping you, don't forget the meat, the meat of the whole deal. Do you know Jesus Christ? Right? Do you know Jesus Christ? See, we're much more effective when we really believe the fact, we believe that, uh, that God is an inspiring delight. This is Christ. And because he is, we were to be, we were to be, we were to be, and I said that three times because that's what preachers are supposed to do, but we're supposed to be, inspiring delights. Now, just stop and think a moment. Have you been an inspiring delight to anyone today? <laughs> for a quarter, I'll dance for you, tell you that. I, I'm just, I mean, I, that's where I got hung up. I thought this was such a wonderful, uh, 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 just a wonderful thought to the fact that if you ask someone to describe the type of person that you were or that you are, would someone ever come back and say, well, you know, that guy, he's just an inspiring delight. I know that won't follow my name, and I'm okay with that. Because it was a conviction that, hey, this is something that I need to work on, right? Because as children of God, you've been given eternal life. You've been given everything. And the only time that pulls us down is when we try to weigh what we have here versus what God has promised for you. And that's when we weigh, when we really pull the, 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 the charge out of the situation. Um, because... Again, our job is to be one who encourages encouragers of Christ. To be that very essence of, of listening to that problem. Uh, if you think about Luke 14, 12. And this is the story, uh, or this is the statement, uh, when Jesus uh, said to the host who was given a party, when you've given a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends, your brothers, or your sisters, your relatives, or your rich neighbors. If you do, they may invite you back, and so you will be repaid. But when you give a banquet, a dinner... Invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of righteousness. Amen. Folks, that's why I was thinking about our church. That's why it is so important that every time we do Sunday morning services, Sunday night services, and Wednesday night, I know they don't all come crowding in here like they do for Fall Fest, but the intent of those doors are open. So people can come get what? Well, it's not, and don't, don't, don't misunderstand what I'm about to tell you. It's not to get something paid for or a free gift. It's to learn about the salvation of God. Right. Number one right. priority. Yeah. Number one priority. When we have Fall Fest, mm -hmm. the opportunities that we're given is to share the Word of God with someone. It's great that we give away all the stuff, right? And it's great that we have all the people come. But when we take the time to say, do you know Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. And that's all, that, and that's the responsibility, because mm -hmm. you can't save them, you can't force them. All you can do is ask, right? Mm -hmm. that, and that's that's the deal, and that's what he's saying right here to 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 invite anyone and everyone to the table.
for the opportunity to share the word of God. Um, and th this is why it's critical that we, when we, like I said, when we do anything in the church that we, we make sure that we, we invite, we make sure that we include. It's great. That's what I'm trying to say. It's great that we enjoy what God has given us. But what God has given us is for us to give away. It absolutely is. I mean, I know this is philosophical to some degree, but it's not. It's really pretty factual. Um, you know, we often I hear these words. Well, they only come when it's free, right? Well, if we feed them, they'll come. Well, that's that's okay, because God did not give you the gift to give, and it, it's a free gift, right? I mean, we have to consider the fact not only what we have in our second, what we have personally, but this, what everything this church has was given to us by God. Amen. Every, right. Everything. Did, did, you know, did we pay for this? No. So, well, I give my money. We all give money, right? But we all give money because it's a repayment back to Him. Amen. Right? Amen. I give it back to Him. Then that's why we say because it's... It, he's, God is free to everyone and, and to all and, and everyone. Remember Job one twenty. Naked I came into this one, right? Yeah. I can see a big old East Texas boy standing up saying that. Naked I came into this world. Naked I'm going out, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. My, my may the name of the Lord be praised. And there said Job what? Completely broken in every aspect of his life. You know, if we clarify that. What I have, all of it, because of God, and that is for the just and the unjust, right? Mm -hmm. Everything that I have, everything I don't have, I give praise to God. Everything. How can we covet, lust, and, and lust after, and fight over what is not ours in the first place? Have you ever thought about that? Right? We got wars going on right now over dirt. <laughs> it's really over pride and respect and arrogance, but it's it's to some degree it's over dirt, right? It's a line drawn in the sand. And we fought, for some of us, we fought in, in, in different situations over less, haven't we? Over pride? Mm -hmm. Somebody said somebody said something about my mama, right? She probably really mean it too. But, you know what I'm saying? There's times when we have, we have put ourselves in places that we don't need to be because we need to realize that the gift of God is what we've been given and is to be given away on a continual basis. None of it should be tied together. Uh, another lesson to consider, Mark 12, 41. Jesus sat down the opposite of the place where they were offerings were put, and he watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came in and put two small, very small copper coins worth only two cents. Calling his disciple to him, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put more money in the treasury than all the others. And y'all know why. They all gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. Mm -hmm. Right? The term? She gave all. Mm -hmm. It could have been two coins. It could have been the last bit of fabric. It could have been, could have been her time. And her, but she gave, she gave everything that she had. Mm -hmm. And sometimes as Christians, we come to the table, we give, but we give what? Yes. Comfortably. Mm -hmm. Right? Oh, yeah. no. When he said, "Will you give it all?" And you know, and we get tangled up on that sometimes. Uh, we get tangled up on that as we rush to close. Um, Matthew nineteen sixteen. He, the 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 the, uh, the when Jesus was talking to the rich man, the young rich man, he said, "Just then a man came up to Jesus and asked, Teacher, what good what good things must I do to get eternal life?'" Why do you ask me about what is good?" Jesus replied, "There is only one who is good." If you want to enter life, keep the commandments. And the young man said, which ones? And Jesus replied, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony, honor your father and mother, and love your neighbors as yourself. You know the story the young man said, I cover all those. I got all those. I've got all those laws. I've got all those rules. He said, what do I lack? And Jesus said, if you want to be perfect, go sell all your possessions, give them to the poor, and you will have treasures in heaven. Then come follow me. And then it says, the young man went away sad. And he said, well, because he was rich. No, because he was unwilling to what? Give it away. Good God wanted Jesus to, was he saying, you got to give, he did physically say that. Excuse me. <clears throat> but the point to it is, is are you willing? Because God knows the heart, right? God knows the heart. <clears throat> Excuse me.
like I said, if you look at the terms tonight of everlasting in this scripture right here, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. Obviously, I'm going to run out of time before we ever touch those. But I really want you to think about the condition that he allows us or the, the description that he gives us in wonderful counselor of who we are to be. Wonder, what was those words again? I got to look them. They're not in my vocabulary. I got to look them. Can you look at What were they? Inspiring delight. Inspiring delight. Inspiring delight. I got a lot of work to do, boys and girls. I, I'm not inspiring delight all the time. I'm not even close to inspiring delight. And I'll just talk about myself um, in the situation. Excuse me. It, it also led me over to Luke 18, 28 through 30, in which he, uh, Peter said to him, We have left all that we have to follow you. He's talking to Jesus. And Jesus replied and said to him, No one who has left home or a wife or brothers or sisters or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will fail to receive many times as much in this age and in the age to come the eternal life when we give all. You know, it's, it's curious that in the reality that he, of who he is and what he gives us as a wonderful counselor, a mighty God, an everlasting father and prince of peace, we would consider the words in Psalm 6, uh, 116, 12, what shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? See, it's a certain level of humility is what he's talking about. Will I give all that I got? Will I give it? Does he want all of it? Think about it. God doesn't need what you got. <laughs> See, that's another level of our arrogance, right? Or, and, or maybe like a couple weeks ago, we talked about the word ignorance versus arrogance. Because sometimes I think it's just pure ignorance. Not that we're stupid, but just the fact that we don't understand God. God could create what we got. And he creates better stuff than we got, right? I mean, really, he does. All my, all my toys come with batteries. <laughs> and when the battery runs down, all the toys run down, right? You know what I'm saying? They break. They fall apart. Remember? So all, all that. But what shall I render to the Lord for all of his benefits to me? Right? How can we appreciate the reason for the season, or for that matter, the gift that was given to us, if we cannot understand it was never meant to be kept? It's the greatest gift of all because he gave it to us, but it's, salvation is the acceptance, but the action is I give it away constantly. And the more I give it away, the more... He replenishes my joy. Great Psalms. Read King David. That's what he said in many paces. The more that he fulfills me is the more I give away of him. My beloved told me many years ago, the love, you, the love in your heart was, wasn't put there to stay. Y'all remember this one? Love isn't love till you give it away. Right? How about it? I'm really curious. We, we could use a revival maybe in the area of wonderful counselor. And I've said this before, as far as the church body, as long as we're going to deal with each other and deal with people, there's going to be problems. Why? Well, because if you have any friends or any family, guess what? Every one of us is a hot mess. <laughs> He's looking at you. I don't know. I'm going to stay out of that relationship. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? But the intent of it is, is that together, together, we come together in him so that we can be that example of what it looks like, right? What does that look like? It looks like, hey, I'm, I'm, we're going to share with one another, right? Mm -hmm. Deal with one another. There's going to be issues and problems that come and they go. And we've, and we've seen this in the, in the four and a half years ago. We've, we've seen the, uh, the ebb and flow of the, the high moments and the low moments, right? But the issue is out here like in the back, dealing with all these youth, right? I mean, we're looking out there, all these rules, trying to you know, keep everything under control. They're little form versions of us, right? Our opportunity is, can we... Spread the word of God above all. And it comes down, and the little boxes are coming back out. But I'm really going to challenge you to think about this Christmas, is that when you're handing presents to someone, that's great. But do you stop to take the time to say, do you know Jesus? Amen. That's all. That's all. That's all. Right? Well, I know he does. I'm, he's a family member. It doesn't matter whether you, you don't know. It's not for you. That's what he told us in John 3, 7. It's not for you to decide. We're, the, the words I've kept, we're not correctional officers. We're guidance counselors. Right? If somebody's wrong, the last thing they need is you come, Paula, you're wrong. Right? Because she probably already knows. We are, usually we walk, we are, what? Mm, yeah, mm. We already know we're in the wrong, right? Don't but our like point is, huh? Don't like to admit it. No, and we don't like it rubbed in our face either, do we? <laughs> but no, that's not what he put us here for. Because Christ, tell me one time that he ever, he always came in with what? 
How can I help you? How can I heal you? Right? Wonderful counselor. But first, yes, if they believe. Do you believe? Because that's our delightful inspiration that we can share this Christmas with many people, right? Mm -hmm. Just a simple statement. Do you know Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. Don't get over-focused on the, on the phys physical part of it, but on the spiritual side of it. So, anyway. Wonderful counselors. <laughs> delightful inspirations to all. Put that pressure on you for a few hours. I'm just saying that. Anyway, God bless y'all tonight. Any any comments uh, closing tonight? Okay. Anyway. Just loving people where they are the way they are. Well, that's a full-time job. Yes, it is. It really is. Easier said than done. Don't judge me. <laughs> anyway. I just love people. It can be hard. Paul dismiss us tonight, would you, sir? Heavenly Father, we worship your holy name. Especially during this time of year. We praise you for all the good things you do to us, not to us, but for us. And even when you give us some guidance, Okay, you wonderful.